Hello, hello, hello. Once again, one more final, hopefully, stream on my FIDE Women's World Cup 2021 journey. The journey that um, let me let me not only participate but also win uh, this uh, World Cup. And of course, uh, this is quite an accomplishment for me at this particular moment, right here, right now. And of course, I was very happy and I'm still quite happy and I'm happy about uh, this ability to share uh, my journey with you. In the first and second part, uh, we, well, I talked about round two, round three matches, round four and round five. So we stopped right after round five match, the quarterfinal of the FIDE Women's World Cup, when, where I won against Valentina Gunina. And uh, today I'm going to talk about the um, semi-final and final matches against Tan Zhong Li and Alexandra Garechkin. Of course, I will appreciate a um, short uh, message from every one of you. It's a short hi or any emote. It will be wonderful. I'm always happy to see many spectators, not only in numbers, but also in messages. And well, on the screen right now, you see the bracket, the uh, FIDE Women's World Cup bracket, done by chess.com, starting from the quarterfinal matches. And you'll see that I qualified for the I qualified for the semi-final, winning Valentina Gunina 2-0, while Tang Zhangui won her match against Katerina Lagno, a very strong opponent. And actually, when I was like watching um, this match, when I was playing, I thought that um, most likely I was going to play against Katerina. I considered her as a strong favorite in the um, quarterfinal between uh, Lagnoi and Tang Zhangui, and I was very surprised to see Katya lost her match. Actually, I wanted to play against her in the semi-final, although we're good friends and teammates, and of course, um, it would have been much harder to play against her and then against Tang Zhangui, for many reasons, for many reasons. But anyway, you know, it's, uh, it's sport, uh, and, uh, sometimes unpredictable results can happen. So, round six, let's get, let's get started with round six. Any, any Tigerus? I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing your nickname correctly, but thank you so much for your uh, subscription and for your support. And let's, let's get to the chess part. So, Oh, 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 here we go. Mm -hmm. oh, here we go. So round number six, semi-final, and it's already been quite a significant um, accomplishment to reach the stage of the World Cup because all the semi-finalists um, qualified for the um, Women's Candidates Tournament 2022. Um, at the beginning, there were only three uh, invitations to this uh, Candidates Tournament um, on the table. But since, uh, and that's why we were supposed to play a match for the third place. But uh, since uh, Alexandra Garechkina was one of these four semi-finalists and she's already qualified, the other two qualified as well. So, yes, as, as easy as that. And uh, meaning that like the main uh, World Cup event, of course it's nice to win a World Cup, uh, but um, like the 
the most important goal of this particular tournament was to qualify for the candidates tournament because in the candidates tournament only eight players qualified um, we know the names of um, three of, uh, we knew the names of three of them before this event and now now there are six six and two more spots are open one of them will be determined uh, in the Grand Swiss and one uh, participant uh, will be invited by will be will qualify by rating okay let's get going let's get going uh semi-final and uh, i was playing black in the first game and i must say that tang jonggi uh, surprised me in the opening i didn't really expect her to play this particular move order she plays uh, many uh, openings and uh, even even if you watch if you watched my uh, review in Russian for chess.com.ru uh, I showed her game against Marie Sibak in uh, this World Cup and where she played where she started the game was e4 and played the Sicilian um, the Neisdorf and won that game but uh, usually usually she tends uh, to play closed uh, openings uh, more often so yes, I expected uh, d4 and I expected some kind of closed openings, um, but not this particular move order. So she played knight to f3 um, and I'm not sure what she, she was preparing and what she was hoping to see. But uh, of course, there are many um, ways for black to face this particular um, opening but i decided to develop my bishop e6 is possible for example but in that case as we know as in um, many uh, slav uh, queen's gambit declined uh, lines uh, this bishop is kind of passive and it requires a lot of time to activate it and i thought why not to bring it out uh, first and then play e6 Bishop g2, e6, c4. Okay, so I believe there is some kind of a Slav defense with g3, um, which is not like the main line, and also as this particular line can be um, reached via the Reti opening when where white starts with knight f3. So many many move uh, orders are possible and. Um, I played c6, queen to b3. I was surprised to see this move. Uh, I believe when I am playing this position with white, I either include h3 first uh, or I play c takes d5 and then I go uh, with my queen to b3 only then if black takes with the e pawn. So after queen b6 to have queen e3. So I, I know this kind of uh, setups and openings. Um, a little bit because I play it for both colors and actually it's a great advice for those of you who are just starting to play chess if you want to play an opening if you want to study an opening try to play it with both colors because it will enrich your understanding of this opening and uh, will help you um, know not only uh, like uh, concrete lines but uh, uh, feel it and see it from both sides okay anyway queen to b3 she played here i played queen to b6 and she played c5 white sometimes plays this kind of uh, system uh, kind of forcing black to take and their idea after queen takes b3 eight takes b3 to open up the a file and then try to use it and probably prepare b4 b5 but to tell you the truth well first of all after c5 queen takes uh, b3 here is not mm, obliged i could have played queen to a6 i'm not sure about uh, queen to c7 though because uh, it's kind of uh, getting under the attack of the uh, bishop and i will need to go to c8 and it's uh, it's quite passive and my bishop here is not really very well placed because it will get under attack of white pieces and uh, white often uh, start to attack it with h3, g4, even f4 after short side castle later on. 
so black needs to be careful uh, but to tell you the truth after queen takes b3 8 takes b3 i haven't played such uh, positions for white i have only um played it for black several times in my career and i don't really feel um um feel why these positions can be dangerous for black i mean i don't really believe in white positions so much and that's why i exchanged the queens and i made um, this very interesting move which is bishop takes f3 as i believe and as uh, is seen in some uh, lines uh, of uh, similar uh, systems uh, this bishop is better to be exchanged for the knight because as i uh I've shown you just uh, a few minutes ago, knight e5 can be quite unpleasant. So I took with my, well, I exchanged my bishop for the knight, and my opponent started thinking here and decided to take with the e pawn. Well, looks a little bit artificial to my taste. Bishop takes f3, of course, um, was much more natural. And uh, here, black has several uh, ways to develop to, to, to developing. Um, one of them being uh, to transfer the knight via a6 to c7, then play a6. Well, I think uh, the position is about equal. Another choice, of course, is more direct and more risky to play e5 immediately and then try to exchange as many pieces as many pawns in the center as possible to open up the space but again since white has two bishops i think it's better to keep the position closed so my plan as i can see it is to play a6 in order to prevent uh b4 b5 advance and to be able to move out my rook uh, from the a8 or to protect it somehow and the knight can be developed via a6 or c7. But again, I think bishop takes f3 is more a, a little bit stronger than e takes f3. My opponent, however, decided to take with the pawn. It um, it doesn't it doesn't improve uh, white structure, right? It does double uh, pawns here, and uh, thus I think it's. Um, it's not advisable here again black has several ways to develop i decided to put my bishop to g7 to prevent keto because um after especially after f considering the last move that white made this pawn on d4 is rather weak that's one negative uh thing about uh leaving i mean moving the this pawn away from the e file and this pawn becomes a serious weakness and now white will need to take care of it and be prepared uh, for a possible breakthrough e5 if i manage to prepare and play e5 in the future then white can face uh, serious um, difficulties okay so my opponent played b4 knight a6 and bishop f1 a very concrete approach very a uh, very um that's that was the idea of as i understood of taking with the pawn uh somehow i don't know you know white wanted to attack my bishop uh, my knight on a6 it's not a big problem to tell you the truth i uh decided to play knight c7 but in fact knight takes b4 was possible mm, the idea is well i'm threatening to play knight c2 so white has to protect. Um, I thought that uh, bish, uh, rook a4 is the idea, but in fact rook a4 is a bad move because I play a5. And what's important and what I didn't really see and realize that I have this b5 move, which is very strong. The idea is to deflect this pawn from this diagonal. So my bishop opens up and starts protecting the knight on b4. And after c takes b6, I will eventually win this pawn somehow, uh, either by playing knight d7 or um, by playing bishop d6, castling or king d7, and then rook to b8. 
so this pawn will be lost sooner or later and thus um and thus uh, my position will start to look uh, much better because of my own advantage in the center because of this decision to double uh, the pawns on the king side and um, thus leaving um, this pawn all alone well but i didn't really uh, see this idea um, rook a4 is not the only move king d1 is another move and probably it's stronger but um, here i'm not sure i would go for this position i mean i don't really like this plan with exchanging the rook uh, i'm not sure i really need to do that so i decided to play knight c7 and as i already mentioned my plan was to play a6 somewhere to move my rook away or to keep it uh, protected on a8 and to stop uh, white from moving this pawn forward at an, an unfortunate moment of course when i play a6 i should keep in mind a possibility for white to go to b6 with her knight and i think it's one of the of the white's idea ideas to wait to threaten to play b5 to wait when uh, black will play a6 and then bring her knight to b6 or a5 via a4 or b3 well in the game my opponent played bishop f4 king d7 knight c3 uh, knight h5 so i'm not really in a hurry to play a6 i explained it why because the knight on b6 um, can be very unpleasant and in fact b5 is not really a threat at this particular moment well for the moment i'm uh, threatening to take on f4 and if white takes on c7 and plays b5 then i start attacking uh this pawn and after rook a4 i can even consider e5 opening up my bishop in my position i'm not sure if it's better or not but definitely not worse so i would say approximately equal considering the fact that we have opposite colored bishops uh, no problems whatsoever uh, my opponent decided to uh, play uh, bishop e3 and uh, well look at this bishop kind of sad uh, a very sad place for this bishop um, to be at and here i made the move that i'm not really proud of i hesitated i was hesitating for a long time during this game whether to make this move or not um there were several options several good options for myself i could have um, tried to bring my knight to f5 because it's not really good to see it on h5 to play knight g7 i could have started with bishop g7 and then a play prepare e5 at some point play a6 e5 so that's my uh further plan i could have started with a6 and then again try to prepare e5 and after knight a4 um well that's the only problem uh, that i didn't really like that knight will go to b6 and i will need to play king d8 and it seems a little bit um unnatural but anyway it was possible instead in order not to consider all this knight's maneuvers i played b5 and it's kind of double-edged well i thought that uh, there is no way white uh, would be able to attack this pawn because if they double the rooks somehow right by uh, bringing second rook to a1 i i can all, always play a6 and protect my a6 pawn but mm, i don't know somewhere it does feel a little bit risky uh, bishop to e2 bishop to d3 was uh, stronger and with the idea to play g4 here and um, i will need some time to decide what to do with this knight suddenly my pieces uh, start being discoordinated and uh, it will require um it will require time to coordinate them to bring them somehow back to the game and set bishop e2 okay she, i can't play bishop e2 um, which is a bit passive on d3 
bishop is standing much better. Bishop e7, king to t, to t king to d2, a6, bringing the pawn to this protected square, h4, knight to g7. Here I don't know what happened to my opponent, but she started making some very strange move, moves, and it could have brought her to like the edge. Um, because she played bishop g5, which is, uh, I cannot understand this move. It gives like two extra tempi to uh, black. Instead, she should have played g4 or bishop g3 again. Again, not clear why she played bishop e2 and now playing bishop g3, but it still would have been better than bishop g5 because after bishop g5, of course, I don't take on g5. I play f6 and now. If she plays bishop f4, I will bring my knight to f5, f5, attacking my pawn on d4, and then playing e5. Uh, at some point, she played bishop e3, but in that case, I play e5 immediately. And after bishop f1, it was not. It was already. Um, I did not make like the best move. Uh, I did not find the best moves here. I played knight c to e6, which is possible, but it um, would have been better to start with this e takes d4, then play knight c to e6, and after bishop h3 play f5. In that case, I attack this bishop on uh, on uh, d4, and when it goes to e5, I have this a5 move. And suddenly, suddenly, white faces serious problems because I undermine this uh, pawn chain. And after exchanging on a5, my pawns again look so much better. And I will uh, try to attack this pawn on a5 later on, and I might get some um, good advantage. Instead, I played knight c to e6. My opponent played knight to e2. Thank you so much for subscription, Cyric FTW. And here again, I played knight f5. Uh, it doesn't really change the evaluation of the position because the position is about equal. But I should have taken on d4. I should have taken on d4 and tried this a5 move. Because here, even though computer evaluates this position as equal, white would um, need to make um, a few accurate moves. And it's like the only moves to keep the balance. Dirge, thank you so much for resubscribing. I have so I have so wonderful my moderators are so wonderful they, they are subscribing to my channel. I should give the subscription out to you for free for your help and instead you're subscribing. Okay. Uh, let's see what can happen after b4, d4. I mean, these pawns are quite weak and white really need to work hard in order to um, keep this um, position equal. Although, as I said, the position is equal. But e takes d4 would have been a nice try. Instead, I played knight f5, bishop h3, h5. Uh, again, the position is equal, but I started, I started playing badly. King to c7 is fine, but after rook h2 1, I should have noticed uh, that my pieces are unprotected, even though there are so many pieces and pawns, but it's kind of hanging, and I should have moved away my bishop to d8, in order not to let white have... Um, the following move, I played king b7 instead, and my opponent could have played knight to f4 here. Actually, immediately after playing king to b7, I realized that this move is possible. I'm not sure if it's uh, as unpleasant as it looks, but again, it might uh, have uh, forced me to work for equality longer and be more precise. Um, because here, her bishop is so much better, suddenly. Um, well, it seems that I'm holding this position, but who knows? I mean, who knows? She has some counterplay with f takes e4, and then if I take with this pawn, she can 
try to attack my pawn set. My rook f2 and uh, uh, rook f1 and I don't know, I'm not sure. Knight f4 is another possibility, but maybe it's stronger, but again, she kind of blockades my pawns here and try to undermine all this pawn chain by uh, preparing f3. Uh, maybe she cannot reach any significant uh, advantage here, but again, I would worry a lot during the game. And I don't know why, I'm sure my opponent saw this knight f4, but somehow in this particular game probably she also did not really like her position a lot. So she decided to play it safe. She <laughs> played f4 and it's kind of securing the game. It's sealing the position forever. And uh, since draw offers were allowed only after the 30th move, she offered me a draw here, which of course I accepted since uh, it was my first game with black and uh, I was happy to make a, like, a short and relatively easy draw and go prepare for the next game, for the second game, when I, where, when I was playing white. And here we go, the second game. Um, well, I use different uh, programs, not only Stockfish, and uh, no, I have not um, a big uh, user. I have not been a big user of chess base. I, I mean, I use it once in a while, but very rare because usually I prefer chess assistant, which is a Russian alternative to chess base. And I, I've been growing up with this program and I've been using it since I was 10. So I don't really see the point to switch to chess base uh, there are pluses and minuses in each of this program but since i'm more used to chess assistant i'm using uh, chess assistant more often okay so the second game in the second game um i'm playing white uh, no well don't you uh, they're not really updating this program but nevertheless interface works interface works so they are updating the number of games but i'm not using their data database and huge base so i'm just using the interface okay so e4 e5 knight f3 knight f6 the russian game as we call it in russia or the petrov defense as uh, this opening is called in the english literature and tanjong e use this opening uses this opening, plays this opening pretty often, so I was expecting it. And actually, Tan Zhongyi used um, this opening very successfully in her match for the third place against Anna Mozichuk after she lost to me and um, yeah, she won uh, one of uh, decisive games and thus won the match. Okay, but in this particular case she was not that successful. I opted for quite a rare line, which I play sometimes, well, to begin with. Uh, my, again, about openings and playing it for both sides. Actually, uh, I have a very <laughs> long relationship with the Petrov defense uh, with black pieces. I started using it and uh, I've been using it very successfully with the black pieces back in 2004 when my coach at that time recommended me that uh, this opening because I used to play the Sicilian uh, and a very um, shaky line of the Sicilian was black um, till 2004 and before that there was a Scandinavian period so I've had a very difficult childhood <laughs> but then I was recommended to play something more classical and I've tried uh, the Petrov defense and I've been using it for a very very long time as I said successfully until <laughs> those big guys such as Caruana and other guys started using my lines as well and meaning that all this huge analysis and uh, grandmasters of top level uh, brought uh, their attention to all my lines and um, uh, 
uh, they started to be well, started to be just too much there. Lacking in, in the Petrov defense, a huge long theoretical lines. Uh, you've seen probably the game between uh, Darius Verch and um, uh, Linier Dominguez from the first round of St. Louis. So, yeah, one for the example, uh, the theory just begins around move 20, and there are like so many uh, variations uh, that's well, I still use this line with black pieces, but not. With such a great pleasure anymore. Nevertheless, while using this line uh, with black, of course, I um, studied all the possible lines with white. Every single attempt of white to get a good position or an opening advantage have been studied by me, so it's easier for me to play against the Petrov defense because well, I know quite a lot in this opening. And in this particular uh, game, I opted for, well, quite a rare line, it's just c4, but it happens, I mean, it's being played. White idea is always simple, uh, I'm trying to take control on the d5 uh, one, on one of the central squares, I will try later on to play d4 or d3 and d4 first and um, get some advantage in the center, thus in the space. Knight c6, one of the main moves, d3, so I'm pushing this knight away from e4, knight f6, because if I play here d4, which is the main move, the knight uh, stays on e4. And then later on, white needs to make a lot of moves to um, either exchange it or uh, force it to go back. While here, I start with c4, and then I have this d3 move which uh, pushes the knight away, and then I play d4. And now one of the main moves for uh, black is d5, in order not to let white play d5, but my opponent opted for uh, another possibility, which is bishop e7. It's possible, but the problem, the drawback of this move, is that I play d5 myself, and my pawn is already on the fifth rank, and that means that uh, I'm getting more space. I'm uh, uh, taking um, I'm taking control over white important squares, and again I'm pushing this knight away from c6. Goes knight e5, go bishop g2, and we reach uh, this position, which is quite similar to the uh, to one of the lines of the Berlin defense. If we go and have a look. At this line, which is being played on a very high level, after knight takes e4, white plays rook e1, and here white exchanges, goes away, and sometimes you try to play d4 and then d5, and something similar appears on the board. I don't know, for some reason, um, these positions look alike to me. Of course, the knight is on f6 here, not on d6, but at the same time, the bishop is on f7, and it's rather passive. Mm, but the move that my opponent made was kind of put me in shock. Um, normally, black develops to f5, castle, castle, knight c3. Well, this kind of position was. I cannot really say that uh, I have a serious advantage, but I've analyzed this position a little bit at home. We've looked at it, we, we, I knew well where to move my pieces, how to play, and um, it um, gave me some, it would give me uh, additional um, confidence uh, and time advantage. But um, I don't know why my opponent didn't play bishop f5, she thought for quite, well, for some time and made this h5 move, which is of course a, a no, <laughs> no way to play move, I mean, uh, I. I don't want to play g4 after bishop f5. Uh, I don't want to weaken my um, king side so much. Uh, so this kind of prophylactic is um, not needed. And after h5, the black squares are weakening. And the pawn on h5 is hanging all the time. And uh, she cannot really castle um, freely anymore because she would need always to think about this pawn about protecting it so h5 of course is a huge position always taken this 
situation. h3, bishop f5, knight c3, I continue to develop Mebeth Harmon MK2. Thank you so much for the mystery gift sub. Nice. Mystery, mystery gift subs. Well, we have some mystery in my, in my chat going on. Good. Well, knight c3, queen to d7. Well, she didn't want to castle, although it might have been a better choice. Uh, because I'm not sure uh, if I can take. No, I think uh, bishop takes h5 here would be. Um, mm, I don't know how to read this position, to tell you the truth. So I might, I might just um, castle. Probably just castling is better. And then yeah, black will need to uh, protect this pawn uh, anyway later on. But my opponent played queen to d7. I played bishop to e3, just developing and trying to wait for my opponent to castle. Of course, I don't want to hurry with my castle. Why? Because in that case, in that particular case, you might consider a long side castle and then g5. And who knows, this h5 uh, move can suddenly become a very smart idea. So I don't really want um, that to happen. And that's why I played bishop to e3. Again, waiting for her castle. When she castles, I castle. A6, mm, that move shows possibility of her to castle long. So again, I'm not in a hurry to castle. I play A4, I take up uh, the space on the queen side. I want to play A5 later on, then probably B4, B5, quite a um, classical uh, plan for um, white in this kind of structures. C5, my opponent decided not to uh, wait and see what is going to happen. Uh, she played c5, but it's, it opens up my bishops, and it weakens the central pawns and gives me very direct target. a5, again, quite a logical move in this situation, because after c5, not only the pawns, uh, have been weakened, but also there is black square, and it looks quite delicious for my knight to get it. Rook b8. Here I could have started with knight a4, but I thought that castling here will not be a problem. Now I don't trust in this g5 uh, attacks with the king on e8, and the rook takes b2 uh, doesn't look dangerous because that will give me time to get my knight on b6, and I saw the line where I uh, will most likely win back this pawn, uh, win back with some dividends. So um, that was the line I was planning to play in case she takes on b2. Well, my opponent decided not to take on b2 and uh, castle as well, but in that case I bring my knight to b6, queen d6, and here one is one of the critical moments of the game. I'm not so happy how I uh, played here. I saw several moves I calculated here for quite a long time and I was choosing between the moves that I made in the game which is rook c1 and another move which I liked quite a lot which is rook a4 why rook a4? because after rook c1 I liked everything except the move that was made in the game which is queen to b4 and suddenly this queen starts attacking my pawns and it's not so clear how to uh, push it back from uh, the square that's why rook a4 was uh, quite a strong prophylactical move, taking under control this b4 square and preparing to bring the rook um, to d4 or even maybe h4 in some lines. After that, rook b to d8 most likely, yeah, and I'm also threatening to play c takes d5 and bishop f4, yes. So after that, most likely rook b to d8 would have been played, but in that case I could have gotten something like this position like this, which is very, very uh, pleasant, and uh, I'm winning one of these pawns. Most likely a black will need to give up uh, the pawn on h5, so you see h5 move <laughs> was not a good idea. It's not so clear whether this position is won or not, because uh, black does get some counterplay with the strong d5 pawn, which is supported by so many pieces right now. Uh, the computer suggests bishop to e2 even here, sacrificing the rook, but getting ready to win one more, one more pawn, uh, and it gives quite a big advantage to white. 
So I think Rook A4 would have been stronger than the moves that I made in the game, but as it often happens, uh, not the best moves uh, sometimes lead to uh, faster uh, victories for some unknown reasons. Uh, Rook C1, Queen B4, a very strong move and the correct one. And I play Bishop to D4. Um, an okay move, but the only problem is that Black would have taken on A5. I would most likely play C5. I know that the computer suggests Rook A2. Ah, no, 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 sorry. I was planning to play Rook A1, Rook A4, and C no, and C5 here. C5 and then uh, taken on A6. The computer suggests taken on A6 immediately. I doubt I would make this move because, well, who knows, I don't know, uh, because in that case I mm, should have been ready for uh, c5, but in that case, well, some calculations is required, I need to sacrifice an exchange, but apparently I do have some compensation, um, but it's quite complicated, the position is quite complicated, and of course that, uh, that was the way the game was supposed to go and queen takes a5 was the strongest move here instead my opponent made the blunder she took on c4 and blunder to blunder i don't know why i have no idea why i did not take on c4 i don't know i don't know guys i should have taken on c4 the idea is very very simple sometimes stronger ideas can be simple too um, after queen takes a5 to play rook a4 <laughs> Mebes Harmon mk2 wow continuing continuing this gift subs mystery nice nice I like mystery going on in my chat so rook a4 the idea is quite simple to trap the queen I think I, I don't recall it but I think I just missed this idea I saw rook a4 I saw queen b5 but just didn't see bishop e2 it happens and if, the, if there are no bishop e2, then my position is just worse. Because c5 is coming, all my pieces are hanging, and... But, but, there is. But there is this very unpleasant move, and it would have been much easier to continue like this. And after queen d6, I take on c6, and just I have an extra pawn with a better position. My knight is so very well supported, I will go to c3 with the bishop to put it on the protected square, and the queen is... Uh, is still shuffling um, uh, on the board and uh, getting under attack all the time. Uh, instead, instead uh, again, I thought for a long time and I made a strong move, but just not as strong as rook takes c4. Rook e1. I am preparing to take on c4 and I am kind of threatening to um, take the bishop if the queen retreats. My opponent played bishop to e6, and here I was going to play bishop c3 with the idea of queen d6 to play queen e2, threatening to play threatening to play bishop e5, and well, I'm better here. I have an extra pawn, but for some reason I saw a very nice idea, and I was and i was carried away with this idea and i was not able to resist although it's not the strongest move in this position and it's a knockout event and it's a match and it's a crucial game and even though i did sacrifice on e6 my exchange uh, it was scary but somehow it uh, completely <laughs> froze my opponent it, it shocked my opponent so much that she was under such a shock she just started blundering her pawns um rook f7 well quite a logical move but king h8 was uh, much better much stronger rook f7 here i well i made also quite a natural move taking on c4 and trying to uh, bring my knight to e5 instead i should have played queen takes e6 and queen takes c4 like this and I have a better position. I have very strong compensation for the um, sacrificed exchange. I will most likely win it back. For example, like this. Very beautiful. 98. Um, but still, it required would require a lot of patience and skills to win the game. 
Instead, I played knight takes c4, which, as I said, is not the best move, because why? A black has bishop to c5. And most likely, after bishop to c5, I was going to take on f6, play knight e5, and win the exchange back and make a draw. Because the position is equal here. Well, for example, like this, something like this, and. Um, lines some possible lines queen takes a six and then some perpetual check after bishop to c5 i can still fight for an advantage but uh it's it's not so clear it will require to exchange the queens uh i'm not sure i would go and would opt for this line during the game but to my luck uh, my opponent instead of bishop c5 she made a fast move which is a uh, the crucial blunder knight to d5 completely forgot, I think, about this possibility. And after bishop takes h5, it's just over. Because queen takes c6 is coming. She cannot uh, retreat her, uh, her rook because of that. She played rook b to f8, but uh, meaning that uh, I'm not only winning back the uh, sacrificed exchange, but I have so many extra pawns that it's just a question of being precise. Of being precise. Here, I made a good move, bishop e3, and actually, actually I almost fell for one trap, I was going to play bishop g7 and realized that knight takes h3 is possible. So you have to be careful till the very end. Bishop e3, here I have two extra pawns, and well, my position is completely winning. And that's what happened, and it's quite an easy line that will get me into a completely winning pawn endgame. Well, that's how this match ended. And of course, it was like a huge, huge accomplishment already by me, not only qualify to the semi-final, but win it in the semi-final and reach the final. And uh, I was very happy, very, very happy, oops, in the final. I met my comp compatriot and uh, my teammate uh, and a very, very strong player. One of the six, I think, in the world history so far to reach the 2600, um, 2600 um, altitude, altitude um, rating. And she's still very young. She's 22, I believe, and she's... Uh, still growing chess wise and i'm sure we will um, see many victories of alexander in the near future and of course it was a great honor for me to play uh, in the final against alexandra to have a russian final and to alexandra so i love my name so i will start with that for those of you who don't know yet i just adore my name and um uh, that's why I don't like when people call me Alex. No Alex, please here in in the chat on 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 my in my on my stream. Just Alexandra. Yes, and indeed there are just, there are so many Alexandras nowadays, and it makes me happy. Actually, Alexandra Samaganova was covering uh, my matches on my channel uh, while I was playing, and I'm very thankful thankful to her. And um, we should do. Uh, a stream together uh, soon at some point uh, but you see i have i have a point for alexandra's yes but Dirk J, that's the same alexandra with an x and with uh, ks actually i um in some of my uh documents my name is written with an x and in some of my uh, in other documents in the other part is uh, written with ks because well whatever whatever it's the same thing Ah, oh, guys, um, I cannot recommend any engines to prepare an opening because I believe that um, in the beginning you don't require an engine to uh, study an opening well. And you can study it well. I mean, you, you, you do require an engine only from like a particular point. And in order to reach this point, you can, you know, <laughs> you can study all the openings without any engines at all. 
Okay, so let's get to the final, 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 final two games, final stage, and um, the first, uh, the first.